Hey guys, this is Hard Time Strong Men. Today we're talking about force multipliers. References will be at the end. Use the shorts, Luke. Why do you do this to me? Because it's like a train wreck. You just can't look away. <laughs> so anyway, let's kick it. Hey everybody, welcome back. So by the end of this, you guys are going to be able to understand and define what a force multiplier is and how to employ it. We're telling you this because it's important to understand how adding a weapon to the average person can increase their lethality. The definition of a force multiplier, it's a capability that when added or employed by a combat force, you, uh, it, sign it significantly increases the combat potential of that force and increases your probability of success. So pr probability of your survival and you're completing the mission. So I like to think of force multipliers as uh, stair steps. So starting off with zero, with just you, bare hand, and nothing. Caveman. Caveman. Ooh, ooh. Ape together strong. Uh, I pick up heavy things and put them down. <laughs> then you with, say, a blade weapon with a knife. Next step above that would be you with a handgun. Next step above that would be you with a rifle. Then with incendiaries or explosives, with up armor, with automatic yeah. weapons, grenade launchers, etc., cetera, right. etc. Cetera. Anything, any tool that you can add to you that can, that makes you better. Plus, with the addition of uh, tracked weapons, so thinking tanks, you're thinking um, ATVs. You can have employ weapons on those, and when they're unarmored, I mean, the vehicle itself is a weapon. You add a weapon on top of that, like a cannon, a machine gun. Right, and it doesn't just have to be weapon systems, like you said. You know, you versus you on a bicycle or uh, SUV, you know, a tracked vehicle system. Let's just say you, you know, in dark light, no light conditions, you know, your naked eye versus you if you have uh, MVGs, if you have thermals, you know, there, there are levels to this. And it doesn't have to even be an object. Person in and of themselves, if they have a skill set, if they have an excellent knowledge base, can be a force multiplier to your to your network absolutely and that force multiplier uh goes up when you add more people to the mix too i can't right. remember the exact number of it it's been so long since you know i've actually gone over this stuff but i i think it's somewhere in the nest, the range of like you add a person and you add like three to five times the lethality of just one person well it's it's crazy you know so think about you know everyone loves to go off on room clearing on ig they love to talk about patrol bases and everything try doing that with one person try to pull security try to clear a room try to do anything just you on your own it doesn't go well <laughs> usually not usually not i don't know if anybody's actually tried to do mountain in their own home i have i realized that it it is kind of a pain in the butt to do that by yourself just because of all the odd angles the the, the rooms just the probability of someone being not in the room that you're going in to clear that could shoot you in the back. It's just... Yeah, when I play that game, I die a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And something else, too, with force multipliers, people don't tend to think of it in this uh, in this mindset, but your everyday carry, things that you just have on your person organically all the time, You know, if you use those and you think about that deliberately, that can be a force multiplier in and of itself. So I'm a nurse. I have a pen line on me just all the time because I have it at work and it's just something easy that I can throw in my pocket. It's kind of stupid how often I use that just daily because half of the day is night. So right. if I have to do chores in the morning, I wake up at like 4 o'clock in the morning every morning. I go outside. I don't want to flip the you know the back floodlights on, so I have my flashlight. You drop something under desk, whatever, You know your knife. I carry a knife on me every day. And on the flip side of that, having medical equipment too can also be a force multiplier because you can get someone who's been injured back into the fight by stemming their bleeding by, I don't know, giving them Advil even. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, everyone loves to talk about, you know, aid kits and their car have a boo-boo kit too. Yeah. That's what you'll use most, honestly. And I do like how the community's headed more in that direction of, right. you know, a lot of, you know, uh, I guess like high value, high, you know, reaching people saying, hey, if you're going to carry a rifle, carry medical too. Absolutely. Yeah, I there's in my car alone, there's three tourniquets. Two on my side, one on the passenger front side. 
depending on how far I go to, I grab my, my IFAC and throw it in the back. I mean, if people don't already have an IFAC just from being in or for buying a pre-made one, you can go on Amazon and you can buy a lot of medical equipment. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if anybody's ever noticed, but with the advent of the radio, the ability for criminals to get away from the police diminished so much. Because you can outrun a, a police car, but you honestly can't outrun a radio. Having the ability to communicate with someone else on your team to call out locations of vehicles, call out locations of enemy troops, call out locations of your HVT, high value target, whatever, doesn't matter, that can increase your survivability, that can increase your ability to accomplish the mission, that can increase your ability to locate and destroy whatever you need to do instead of having to send a runner to find somebody to, to relay this kind of stuff. Also, communication is you know, one of our three basic warrior tasks. Yes, radio is important, but it's one of the three things you're supposed to be doing anyways, shooting, moving, or communicating. And with radio, like you said, it's a decentralized form of communication. So you don't have to rely on cellular towers that can go down or can be sabotaged or whatever else. But yeah, having something organic to your, to your network it helps out so much. It, it enables you to shoot more effectively, honestly, being able to call out targets, um, even if that's, your spotter's not next to you. Right. So we'll think about communication. What are we communicating? All right. So you're giving status updates on you, on your team, on whatever, you know, we have laser force, ace reports. So, hey, how much ammo do you have? Are you a casualty? Do you still have your equipment? You know, you can do salute reports for... You know, if you see an enemy before they see you, there are so many things that we need to communicate, and there's no excuse not to have a radio anymore. When you can go on Amazon and you can buy a twenty, twenty-five dollar Biofang and have all that capability, and I know a lot of people are saying, you know, oh, you're gonna get direction found and get your buddies killed, but there's a reason why comms windows, comsec, offsec exist. We'll cover that in another episode too. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll probably go way more in depth on on offsec, on radio sec, on you know, just basic communications, especially over a radio. Yeah. Because at, at no point should you be calling out your name, your exact location over the radio. That's just, if the Russians approved anything in Ukraine, that is the best way to get yourself freaking killed. Well, you and your buddies killed, right? Yeah, that too. We kind of went off on a, a tangent, but, you know, we we're talking about, like, in the vehicle, right? So having medical, having arms, having communication in your vehicle. It's all a force multiplier. If you can, you know, crossload with your buddies, if you can all use your network and keep that uh, continuity between all of you, knowing that, all right, at the very least, my buddy's going to have this, this, and this in their car, or this, this, and this in their kit. Plus, it's also a good idea to to think ahead and and realize, you know, multiple pieces of equipment can perform multiple purposes, so. You know, yes. You may be able to take your bandage, and you may be able to wrap a wound, but you can also take that and fasten two poles together to make a structure. You can use it to create a uh, a makeshift tourniquet. You can use it to create a splint. I mean, you can use it to, I, I don't know, tie your radio to your gear. Like that. Well, it just... it aids in redundancy. Yes. So yes. besides very, very niche tools for very specific tasks, you should aim to have multiple uses like per tool. Right. I know my Beofang, like not only can it perform a, a communication thing, but I can use it as an SOS. I can use it to beat someone's head in. Yeah. If you, so if you attach a chem light, you can throw it and signal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you can, <laughs> if someone's nearby and you can't get a, a radio signal out to them, just attach a chem light to it and just freaking chuck it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a little known fact, you know, AR-15 magazines, M4 magazines, also not too bad of a pillow. And on top of, you know, just the physical aspects of uh, equipment being force multipliers, you, you also have to uh, take into account that knowledge, knowledge can be a great force multiplier just because if you can understand how something works, how something's supposed to happen, tactics, how to pick a lock, you know, that can be a great force multiplier and having the knowledge conveyed to you by a subject matter expert is probably the best way to go. Whether that, that be in person, uh, Googling it, YouTubing it, whatever, your buddy down the street, if you can get that knowledge and, and it's reputable and it works, it doesn't matter if it sounds stupid. If it's stupid, it works. It's not stupid. If you can convey that knowledge. 
Yes. It doesn't matter if you know everything, if you can't teach anybody anything. Along those lines, making yourself a force multiplier, building your skill set. You know, you were saying, you were talking about systemic. Can you source and purify water? Can you grow a potato? Do you know how to repurpose various um, car parts? Yes. I mean, and you can't, you can't know everything. But when we first started this series, you know, we said that very little of this skill set is actually just shooting or just mount or just warrior tasks. There's so much that goes into it. And no, you can't know everything, but try to learn as much as you can. And then network with people, build that community, get people together so that people can fill in the gaps. Right. And we also said that from the very beginning, we were starting from ground zero. We were going to treat everyone like they knew absolutely nothing, like they were just Joe, Bob, and Susie off the street. We're going to take you. We're going to convey as much information as we can. We're going to try and convey it in a way that you can understand so that we can turn you into a force multiplier. Because, yes, lethality is important when defending yourself, but it's also something that's only going to happen most likely less than 10% of the time. Like maybe less than 1%. The rest of the time is just survival. It's knowing how to fix a car. It's knowing how to build a shelter. It's it's all these things that we've tried to convey so far and more. So I know we have a lot of information to convey, but we're going to do our best to get to you. Whether you choose to soak it in by osmosis, tune us out, don't matter. We're going to put this out here, and you guys can do with it what you want. With that being said, stay safe and be better. This was Hard Times. Strong Bye, everybody. Oh, 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 o